Hey guys, going to take a quick look at a program called Lucas Chess, which I think is pretty good for anal analyzing um, chess games. We were talking earlier about how to analyze games using software such as Stockfish or Crafty or Houdini or Ribka or whatever. And um, I think it's important to have, you know, a pretty good chess engine, but it's actually maybe more important to have a good host program that allows you to use um, the features of the engine and present the data that it can gather in an easily understandable and accessible way. And I think LucasChess is actually pretty good about that. I want to show you um, a quick game, or actually how to do this really in LucasChess. So what you do is you open a PGN file and then these buttons up here, there's the one called Utilities and Analyze. And I can set my options here. There's the engine um, how long you want it to think on each move. I usually use 10 seconds, which is pretty long actually, but I think it's important to give it some time. You can set lots of different um, options, including marking moves that are in error. This is um, the default settings here, and you can actually generate a file that contains moves with errors, or positions that you made an error in, or in a couple of different formats here and you can make a file of good moves here where I guess if you gain a certain amount of evaluation points here then it considers that a good move. So I'm not really sure how that works but I don't use that those options very often. Um, you can have it skip over the opening moves if it's in the opening moves are in its book here and you can select whatever book you want. Um, you can select a range of moves here and then there's some other stuff here. So we just accept that and what it's going to do is go through the, the uh, moves of this game one at a time and analyze it. And I'm going to pause the video while it does that. And at the end I'll come back and we'll go over the features of, of what it's come up with. Okay, so I, I stopped it a little early. It was taking a very long time to do that. I don't have a whole lot of time for this video. So um, this is what the output looks like. This is the position in the game where the analysis was canceled by me, which was around move 24 here. And now you can see that the moves have been color-coded, and they have little icons beside some of the moves. The moves with this little icon were straight out of the opening book that I set, so it ignored those moves. Um, and then D6 and D5, uh, I'm really not sure why it doesn't analyze those. That's probably a setting. They may also be book moves. I'm not entirely sure. This knight B8, though, as you can see just by you know looking, that is probably a pretty bad move for black. And... Um, here is where it started analyzing and you can see that it has some problems uh, with that move based on the evaluation. So going through here, the moves all become hyperlinks. The blue moves are colored blue because the computer evaluated them as either um, one of the best moves or near the top. The uncolored moves I think are just average quality moves and the red colored moves are pretty bad moves, blunders basically. These yellow moves are somewhat bad, basically suboptimal I would guess is a good description for that. There is a purple grade which is a um, superb move and um, I think there's one other color that's in here somewhere. I think I can look that real quick. Config, uh, view, and then colors. You know, let's look at this. Good move all the way down to very poor move. Purple is a very good move. Poor move, so that's your suboptimal, like I said. So you can set these colors to whatever you want. And I believe there's actually a way to customize um, exactly how it decides all of those things. I don't believe I've seen very many of these greens and yellows. Those may be something that you can set manually. Okay, so you can see that each different color represents something different in terms of how the engine graded it, and then you can get the specifics. If you click on the move, and it brings up a little analysis board, and you can actually see where your move ranked um, according to all the moves. My move was bishop takes e4, and you can see that that was the one, two, three, four, uh, fifth best move. The best move was bishop d5, according to Houdini. And then it gives a primary line, which you can just step through right here. This is the primary variation based on Houdini's selection of uh, bishop d5 as being the best move. And it analyzed 16 different moves, which is not every legal move, uh, in this position it may be, but there's a limit to how how deep it goes, which I think you can set as well. Or it may be related to how um, long the thinking time that you set was.
And there's some different options here um, that you can use, and you can actually open up a new board where you could move things around in sort of an examine uh, setting. So each one of these moves that has this little speech bubble, I think that's what it is, each one of these little moves that has one of those has this sort of a rating. And the red moves are when you can see that um, in this window, red means something different. The red moves here mean that the side that's got the move is in trouble pretty much no matter what they do. Um, and this is a move that it would have deemed acceptable because it's simply the best move in the position. Uh, as you can see, all those moves were red. A5 was the fourth best, but it decided that that was, you know, reasonable in the position and therefore it didn't get a color. It's kind of black or gray or whatever color that is. So the reasonable moves, I think, stay kind of neutral like that. But the moves where it's got a clear feeling one way or the other, it starts to add the color to. Um, so as you can see, there's a lot to like about how Lucas Chess does this. Um, the colorization makes it easy to spot the blunders and easy to spot the good moves and kind of easy to get a feel for how the game went. Um, the book moves here are pretty obvious. Aside from this little colorization issue or, or lack of icon issue, I'm not sure what that's about. It did skip those moves, but it didn't put the icon next to them to show that that they are book moves. So I'm not exactly sure what that's about, but I haven't delved too deeply into the options and all that stuff. Um, so that's how Lucas Chess works on analysis, and I'd love it if you guys left some comments or questions or whatever, and um, hopefully you guys will check it out. I think Lucas Chess, uh, real quick while I've got it here, I can show you um, kind of what else Lucas Chess has. There's lots of training options. There's positions. Um, including positions that I've created with my own analysis of my own games. The most useful thing I think here is this tactics by, uh, however you say that guy's name, Auerswald. Uh, that's pretty cool stuff. There's mates from GM games. Play like a Grandmaster is basically a guess the move thing with a grade where it rates your move next to the Grandmasters and compares computer um, computer analysis scores. Training mates, find the best move, training with a book where you can create your own opening book and then train with it, which is sort of similar to Chess Position Trainer, but without the options of creating a book in the software. You have to create the book some other way. Learn openings by repetition, same thing. There's a daily test, a resistance test, tactics by repetition. This is spaced repetition, that learning style. Um, some beginner stuff. And then this resources for zebras has kind of a cool thing. I really like this determine your calculating power, which you can find some videos on on my channel if you're interested. All right, so that's a quick look at Lucas Chess. See you later.